Hello and welcome to Console Shock Retro and Modern Gaming Chat with me, Trev, and Stu. Um, Stu, all right? Yeah, yeah, good, mate. I was, I was thinking, um, I'm going to steal your joke. I, th- I think we should rename the podcast Review Tech UK. Yeah, I think it would be good because that means that we can potentially just change the format at will and then not actually change the format. Because that yeah, seems to what be we a should thing do if you're reviewing is, tech. It's, it's not talk about news, but the reason, the main reason I wanted to change it to Review Tech UK is we've sacked our editor on his birthday. That's how it works. That's, and again, that's exactly what you do if you're reviewing tech, right? Yeah, you just take your editor on his birthday. Be, I, don't really do know, long... I, don't, I don't really know the story. I mean, was it was it just like <laughs> a parting of ways or...? Well, he, he, he flipped. You, okay, people are like, you'll probably guess who we're talking about, right? But I guess yeah, we should Review Tech USA. Rich from Review, review Tech. Review. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and there's a, there was a, the recent thing where he had a big... Um, uh, big video announcement, which he's done loads of times, where he said, I'm not going to do the news anymore, I'm going to do long-form dynamic content or something. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, it, he actually straight away stopped doing that. Um, <laughs> it's like, it, literally the last few days he's released um, a couple of videos about whatever you, YouTube drama. And, and I, 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 I like those videos. I think, you know, I think they're, they're entertaining to watch. Mm. Um, although, I've, you know, I don't someone being you know cancelled on twitter or something or cancelled on twitch isn't isn't that important for the video game industry and i do like to listen to that actual proper mm. video game industry news but um yeah for well i think we all knew he was going to backtrack on on that so you know what i think i've missed this are you saying he's sacked jay the guy that works as his editor yes yes so jay was doing um there was a when video come out um a, f- a few days ago because um jay did a review of uh, a game i think it was hell what's hell, hell what's it hell raiders 2 or hell, hell divers hell divers yeah and yeah. um so there's a review of that or, or another game or some or something and then so that was on the review tech usa channel for about an hour or so and then it disappeared, and then it appeared on JKB's channel. Then a few days later, he was, oh, I'm, I'm going to be doing a stream. I, w- I was sacked on my birthday. And I don't really know the bottom of, of the st- was it sort of an amicable? Was it, oh, you know, we just, you know, we had different thoughts about the way the channel was going, and, you know, I went this way, he went that way. But oh, a couple I'll be, of days I'll be honest, ago, yeah. I'm just seeing I, his little Twitter, yeah. Yeah. I, I was I, fired I, on my birthday. Exactly, yeah. but I couldn't be bothered, to be fair, to watch the six-hour stream to find out <laughs> exactly what happened. And I thought, it will come out in the wash. I'll find okay. out what happened. So there's no real end to this story. I don't think either of us know quite uh, what was going on. So maybe we should move on. <laughs> I didn't even know about uh, He had a video like yesterday about um, Alana Pierce, I think is her name. Mm. About how uh, just which is just about um, the term you know the term gamer and how people still think all gamers are nerds. That I mean, I want to say living in their parents' basement that isn't a UK mm. thing. The equivalent for us is just living with our parents <laughs> in the various yeah. other areas of the house that we have in the UK, um, or just our bedrooms, I guess. Um, and uh, yeah, it was about that. And I assumed. I mean, this was yesterday, so I, I, perhaps perhaps he didn't edit that then. Maybe Rich Rich. Ricardo himself um, edited that himself. Wow, I thought they were really good buddies. They've all, they've all, all yeah, so, that so they I, that, that, like... I, I genuinely think it's a little bit like they've, you, you know, they've gone. Oh, actually, oh, I, I want to move this way, and it was oh, you know, shaking hands, and it was all quite um, amicable. Um, I think JKB on the two minutes of his stream, I, I did watch. He did say, oh, you know, I, I, I'll be talking about. Um, doing more reviews, lots of streaming, and I won't be talking about drama. So I don't oh, here, here you go. So Richard uh, on on Twitter, I know it's called X, but I can't, I'm not calling it that. Um, weirdly, a tweet 22 hours ago, he said, uh, "This is Rich saying this. Editing is kind of cool. I forgot, lol." So you know, that's him <laughs> saying, "I'm doing the editing now." Um, yeah. Wow, that's weird. Maybe, maybe he couldn't afford to pay him. I don't know what he was paying him. Was it a full-time job that Jay had doing that? Oh, you know what? The first time I heard he had an editor, I was genuinely shocked. 
it's like a couple of years ago when he said in one video, like, so yeah, I got my editor to, I was like, wait, you have an editor. You're just sitting in front of some monitors saying things that needs an editor. <laughs> and yeah, it, 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 okay. It does, you know, I'm not, I'm not being completely, completely ignorant. He has mm. cuts to like, you know, game footage and a cut to a website. And then it, 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 if someone says a slow zoom on, on, on him, if mm. he's saying something very, you know, poignant, um, that would need editing. But again, I'm like, you know, making 15, a couple of, well, when he was at his most prolific, I think he probably knocked out what, like a couple of them a day, five days of the week, perhaps. I was thinking that's probably something one person could do on their own. Um, as someone yeah. that has done some editing, you know, um, but yeah, that, that, that that's right. I, I'm, I'm, I mean, I, I don't want to sort of take anything away and you know, I'm, I'm really sort of edited many of it. I've give, given it a go a, a few times, but in reality, yeah. Yeah. They're, they're not you know he's not casey neistat he's not trying to no. tell a trying to tell a real narrative he's just trying to put a you, you know a five minute video uh together and um you know but saying that though i, th- I think he's got you know tough issues with his family and stuff he, he, he's going through so maybe that just gives him some time back to spend with them potentially so uh, you know yeah, but there's I'm loads not... of um, there's loads of like, YouTube drama videos about him now firing firing his his editor. Oh, really? I need to okay. Investigate this. Yeah, we'll, <laughs> we'll update you on the next video, guys, on the next podcast. Absolutely. What happened? It's definitely, yeah. what people will listen to us for to talk about other <laughs> YouTubers. <laughs> to be fair, actually, I know we laugh about that. And we say, oh, how we we shouldn't talk about other YouTubers too much because people are going to think it's boring. But there's there's actually a podcast I listen to when it's mostly people taking the mick out of the angry video game nerd. It's called Red Red Cow Arcade. I don't know really? if you've heard, okay. heard of those guys. And it's basically, they don't, it's not just that. They, they do other stuff as well, but mm. it's, it's actually really good. Um, and Lady Decade, they've done stuff on and all kinds of like you know YouTube drama stuff. Yeah, it's a bit better, high quality than, than than Rich, I would say. But they're another they're another. Uh, I, uh, I think two, it's, two guys, but yeah, I, I wouldn't want to you know sort of go too far on, on on this. And I think if Rich was sort of listening, I, I think I think he'll appreciate that we were doing this quite sort of tongue in cheek. And uh, well, yeah, you, you, yeah. You, you know the fact that we're talking about him is. You know, because we, we've watched him for years, it's a little bit of an in joke within within the podcast, and um, yeah, uh, yeah. So I I I'm, I don't know if I'd you know a whole podcast about moaning about oh well that that YouTuber's a sellout that that one's oh he's he's a grifter or whatever that really is, and oh you know um, what was it um, yeah angry video game nerd oh he, he was better in two thousand and three. Yeah, no, he pretty probably was, but I mean, it's actually a funny one that actually with AVGM because I tuned out of, of, of Angry Video Game Nerd, hmm. um, God, in like um, 20, 2013 or fourteen, maybe even before hmm. that. Not, not because I thought he was he's gone crap now and I hate him. Like people go and get very you know add so much a layer of melodrama to unsubscribing from someone, don't they? Mm. Um, it just got just you know he just drifted out of my line of sight of, of, of stuff on YouTube that I watched. And I was I watched like um, um, I randomly stumbled across or it was thrown at me in, with the algorithm of um, I've forgotten her name, but it's La- Lady Lady Emily, I think is her name. And she posted like this big documentary of like a two hour thing of the rise and fall of the angry video game. So it was actually really good. Um, and it was about, you know, why he's rubbish now and like why he was good, why people think he's rubbish now, not necessarily her opinion. Mm. Uh, why, why he became good in the first place. Cause I watched him when he, not long after he started, when he blew up on, on, on like YouTube, uh, actually on game trailers, I used to watch him on, on that before you even had, he, uh, he really was on, on, on YouTube. So mid mid two thousands. Um, I, I was watching him back then, um, but it started. I think she started off the video by saying, "Yeah, I kind of drifted away from from angry video game nerd." And I feel most people did about twenty fifteen. I'm like, "Wow, I was like, I was long gone from 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 watching him at that." <laughs> do you know point. what? I, I, so, I yeah, I do. When his videos pop up, his actual um, AVGN videos, I, I do sort of. Yeah. What I do is I download them, and then I'll you know I, I might watch a little bit, and some of them have been generally quite good. But yeah. the 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 issue with the angry video game, there's been no progression over, you know, how he films things, the editing, the the you know the storytelling, the jokes. It's all very. This is what I was doing in 2002, 
I'm going yeah, to do the yeah. same thing in 2024. And you haven't, you haven't, he, he hasn't evolved. It's evolved, yeah, yeah. And, and um, but maybe that, that, that's, that's a good thing, you know. It, it was sometimes when people evolve, oh, I don't like the new one. Oh, God, he's, oh, he's, he's, he's completely different now to how he used to be. Well, actually, he's not. He's, he's how he, how he was. But maybe it, it's, I, th- I think it still feels like a very much, you, you know, something like, do you know, like those little skits from Wayne's World? It's like, you know, someone in their basement sitting in front of their computer games and, 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 you know, drinking a rolling rock. And, um, yeah, and yeah I, I don't, I don't think there's been, yeah. And he just talks about, I don't know, like poo and, <laughs> and shit and, <laughs> and, and crap and, and puts the same sort of little twists onto things. And, um, yeah, it's it's. I, I don't know. It, it still feels like exactly how it was d- done. And maybe if I watch one from twenty years ago and watch it now, I go, oh, actually, yeah, it has it has improved a lot. There's been a bit more, bit more life to it. And but I think he was um, he was on um, featured on uh, H Bomber Guys uh, video where he his the channel uh, what's it Cinemassica um, yeah, actually. Yeah. Um, they've tried to okay. Let, let's try and bring other people in and and do you know video reviews and interviews and, and and little bits and pieces. And I think none of those have really sort of worked in, in, in my in my opinion. Um, where they've just been a little bit. I, I mean, there was a whole plagiarism thing as H Bomber guy was talking about with with some of his videos. So maybe sort of the quality drop there and they, you know, try to get some quick wins. And unfortunately that was with copying other people, which, which you shouldn't really do, but obviously you shouldn't do. But then actually, you, you know, looking at his channel, his angry video game nerds, you know, get multi-million views. They still get that and still people are finding them and enjoying that. But then the other ones where they're reviewing, I don't know, uh, the, a, a Robocop film or, or something like that might get sort of 50,000 views and yeah, they haven't really yeah. quite got the same, you know, staying power um, or quality as potentially the AVGN has. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think you, you, with his back catalogue and he, he kind of really need to do anything different at this point, as much as we can complain that maybe it would help yeah. him if he did. He's kind of, he, he hit that sweet spot where it was on, he was on there when, you know, um, that sort of content was on the up and um, he was able to make the most of it. And yeah, he can probably just coast along now. And there'll be enough people, I think, to watch him for as long as he's alive and making videos, um, I think. And mm. Yeah, fair, fair play to him. Fair play to him. But um, well, I guess we've covered all the YouTube drama that we can stomach, I think, for now. But yeah. there's drama in sort of the wider video game world, isn't there, Stu? Yeah, so um, in the last few weeks, there's been all these conversations about are oh, all of the Xbox games are going to be coming to PS5, coming to Nintendo, and 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 I'm of um, of I'm of the opinion. Well, okay, more people can play them, and you know that that's a good thing. And I haven't really got an issue with that, and and I don't like the, the sort of the gatekeeping around. Oh, these these are my games. Oh, they're your games. Your your system's rubbish. My my system's amazing. Mine's got more teraflops than you. And so there was this, you know, real sort of backlash about sort of the rumours that Xbox games are going to go into PS5 and go into. Uh, the Nintendo sort of ecosphere, which has been done before with things like Minecraft and obviously with the Activision uh, purchases now, loads of Activision games are still going to be coming out on PS5 uh, or PlayStation um, ecosystem. And the same, I imagine some uh, Activision games will be coming to Nintendo and I want to make the point of, you know, actually PlayStation games have been coming out on PC recently or actually for the last few years. And also, um, what's it, the MLB, the show games? It's quite funny looking at the trailer for that. It's on Xbox oh, and it's made by PlayStation Studios. So there is a lot of cross cross play between one system and another. So I haven't really got a, a big issue. I, I think it's quite a positive thing. And of course, they made the announcement, 
uh, about it, which I thought was quite a good presentation, covered most things. And they said that four games will be coming out. And I think there's, you know, in my opinion, it'll be Sea of Thieves, was it Hi-Fi Rush, um, yeah. and maybe a couple of other games as well. But, you know, the big, um, you know, AAA games, it's not going to be them. It's going to be the more the games as, as a service are going to be coming out to a wider audience, which I don't really think is a bad thing. I think it's quite positive. Yeah. It's very pro, pro-consumer, pro I think. I mean, the, the issue really is, I mean, I'm the same as you. I don't really have a, have a, have any stake in either of them winning. Mm. Um, oh, yeah, when we were kids and you can only afford to get one system, it was fun mm. to, you know, um, be obsessed with the one that you happen to have versus the one that your mates had that you thought was rubbish because you didn't own it as well. Yeah. Obviously, when you got a bit older and you could buy your own stuff, maybe you could have more than one of the systems and you kind of didn't care and you just wanted to have the maximum amount of awesome games that you could have. And that meant getting all of them. And obviously, when you're our age, you know, middle-aged men, um, I'm sorry to say, uh, that isn't an issue, you know, even less so when we have jobs and we can, you know, hopefully have enough money to buy all this stuff anyway now. Mm. Um, so uh, it'll be interesting how, in terms of, consumers will make a choice because they're supposedly going to keep making hardware which i think is a good thing but really yeah. if you're going to get um if if, the, if a lot of the biggest you know most of the xbox games perhaps i'm not sure if it will go as far as things like halo going on playstation it might uh, most we don't know yet exactly what what's going to going to happen um if it, it'd be interesting if a lot of those games do turn up on the playstation what is the point in buying an xbox really um because you know if i get a playstation i've got the best xbox games all the playstation games and and you know i should just i just need a playstation and i'm covered for uh, for everything what's the point in buying an xbox so yeah it, it, that's the main thing how they deal with that yeah exactly and i think that's where they're sort of picking and choosing the games that are going to go across and you mentioned halo and potentially halo infinite the online s aspect of it that could come across to playstation yes. that might yeah. be and that'd be like wow halo's going to playstation well you know not the story part of it potentially that and that'd be a big deal but if you think about it within the pc echoes ecosphere or whatever the word is um and then also within the playstation xbox nintendo people don't realize the benefits of having you know three different uh manufacturers competing together to make you know the best system and and otherwise it would just you know stagnate and you might have you know playstation go well actually you know we can if if they've got a dominant market position they might not bring out the ps6 for a few more years they might put up the game price of games they might yeah you, you know, so the fact that they got one system competing with with another one, and they were talking about um, in in the presentation, you know, Xbox to come out. The next generation will be the most powerful system, you know, the world's ever seen. Or you know, they were talking about you know words like that. They want to yeah. sort of compete. Yeah. They want to you know bring out the best value, try and get the most power out out of the sort of the silicon. And I think I think that's a really positive thing. And again, with PC gaming, you know, you've got Nvidia competing with uh, AMD. You've got Intel competing with you know AMD when it comes to processors. And then you've got all of the different game storefronts, you know, competing against each other to to give you basically, you know, to try and give you sort of the best service that you know the best things that they can offer. So I th- I think all the video game companies competing against each other is, is actually a really positive thing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you, there's also an argument that you could say the PC might be the best platform in potential. What do you think me and you, that's probably what we're going, we, we would go for. And it's been the case yeah. now, certainly for me and it is for you now anyway, but um, mm. you know, obviously there's PlayStation games now that have come out on the PC. Well, the PC is already in that position that we're saying the PlayStation might end up in, where you, you kind of have everything really if you get the PC. Mm. Um, I mean, if you if you're going to attract people from consoles to it, though, you need to streamline. Certainly on the Windows side, it needs to be streamlined to make me you know like a, we've speculated on this before, but like a Windows Gamer Edition. So mm. you know all, all the jankiness and all the regular sort of UI that you use for when it's general purpose OS is is uh, stripped stripped out or, or hidden behind a super streamlined joypad controlled 
basically like a Steam Deck. Um, mm. If you can get there with Windows, then maybe it will become something that a console, you know, um, zealot uh, might actually think, you know what, this is, this is I, I, I can do PC gaming now. It's straightforward to, mm. to work with. Um, so, um, yeah, the, P, the PC is already there. But I think N- Nintendo, I don't think they'll, they'll go um, software only. They sell so many con- consoles. I, know they, I, 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 th- I think Nintendo's in its own, you know, little ecosphere of they're not, they're not in that world. They'll, they'll always... Well, hopefully they'll always sort of produce their own hardware and yeah. and you know with their own sort of ips there's a real sort of media world word ips but actually yeah. the other bit of news I've, it just sort of come to mind that there was some i mean as of, kids as kids this is why we preferred sega we used to say to our parents well i think the intellectual <laughs> property of the sega mega drive is higher value to shareholders well, than nintendo so could you buy me that for christmas please? talking about shareholders is there was a, a PlayStation sort of announcement that the and I couldn't quite believe this that they're saying the PlayStation Five is nearing the end of its lifespan, or it's Did in, they say near the or it's in its second it was, downward downward trend of its lifespan, wasn't it or something? Yeah, yeah. and I, and I feel I haven't got a PlayStation Five yet, and I feel it's just. It's in the last year we're actually starting to get dedicated PlayStation Five games, and they're not making PS4 games, or some people still are versions of games, and people are starting to utilise the the PS uh, the PS5. So I'm I was I was I was quite shocked by that because it feels to me as if you, you know the PlayStation Five really has only sort of just come out and just got into its stride. And now they're sort of talking about, well, actually, it's on its way out and we're sort of planning the next one. And I I was a bit shocked. Yeah, I wasn't that surprised, actually, when you kind of really think about it, because uh, Mm. it's it's amazing to think how quickly time has gone by. But these consoles of this generation, the ninth generation, are now three years old, more than three Mm. years old. So realistically, if they're going to be lasting another seven years before their, their successors come out, yeah, mm. you're kind of about halfway now, um, and that's that's fine. You can, I mean, to be honest, you're still going to get games even after. If you're worried that mm. the games are going to dry up next year, then you don't need to worry because they're obviously not, and they'll still make them after the successes are out there. Like you say, they're still making PS4 games. Uh, so it's a lot less uh, uh, of them. 100%, but, but I yeah. think it's more about the the wording. And, yeah. you, you know, I wouldn't I wouldn't go out and, and say – Oh yeah, you know, I'm 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 an Arsenal football fan, and you know, I think I I think they've reached their peak, and they're on their way out, and there probably won't be a football ga- uh, team in ten years' time. I'm, I mean, yeah, that, yeah. That, that that's not something that that I would say, or potentially you should say, because. Mm, it's it, almost it's, like it's they had it was one. kind of an internal marketing or, or corporate talk that kind of ended up going out to the public almost um, isn't it so i'm sure internally they say this to each other all the time oh yeah the ps5's got three years remaining of being our main line system and we need to start preparing for the next one now oh yeah which is what has always been the case you know um it's yeah just they, they've now. got a road map and and, and everything yeah. and they're probably going oh you know 2020 what year is it now 2024 so 2027 that's when the playstation 6 is going to come out and you know it'll be at this price point and then we'll aim to We'll, we'll do this with a PlayStation 5 and it will have that and we might do a portable one. You know, there's all these different things that they might, you know, they'll have plans. Um, but I think it's just weird that it was announced in such a way and and, and to me, that, that was much bigger news than uh, about the Xbox going you know, all oh, Xbox games are going to be on the on the PS5 and uh, you know the Nintendo Switch. To me, that was like, oh yeah, well, obviously that 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 might happen. Um, yeah, I, th- I think hmm. to sort of put a conclusion from my point of view on what my sort of final thoughts on it are. Um, yeah, like like we've already said, I think it's a good thing generally that everybody ultimately be great if there if if there wasn't any console factions really, and that you could get whatever system, whatever box you bought. You can play anything that ever might possibly ever come out. I don't think mm. it'll ever be quite like that. 
Um, but I think generally this uh, this sort of trend towards having less exclusives and more things being available to more people is is a good thing. Yeah. Um, and to some degree, like you said, if you've been playing on PC, you've already experienced that over the last couple of years with PlayStation games and Xbox games being on PC. But to spread it, you know, spreading the love sort of thing is always good. Uh, but but yeah, it's um, nothing that's really going to, in terms of me, um, it's not really going to affect me. I'll still be playing PC. To be honest, the most compelling things that I've heard from all of this for me is there's supposedly now rumors of handhelds coming from Sony and Microsoft, which I think is very cool. Um, mm, I would love 100%. to see, like, instead of a, a Series S, you they just make a handheld. So you've got a lower powered handheld version of of the the X. You know, we have the uh, the Series X and the Series handheld, uh, but they're the same. So the games can be developed for, for for a single platform, and they'll run on both. But obviously, the handheld potentially the graphics are scaled down. You know, and all that kind of stuff. Um, I, I, I would love to see, you know, a Game Pass handheld. Yeah, um, yeah. And I don't that, mean that, like a streaming thing. I mean literally a full, you know, like a, a, like a full, say, a yeah, basically deck. the Steam Deck, but you open it up and, yeah. it, and it's that version of Windows that you were talking about. So I think it's down to, you know, Microsoft to actually go, well, come on, guys, you know, let, let, let's make a – it's quite funny because my, my, my gaming PC, and that's the right name for it, because I don't do anything, you know, I don't really sort of browse the internet on this. I don't, you know, do any sort of productivity work on here. This is this is for gaming. And so there's loads of functionality within the operating system, which is taking power. Well, actually, I don't I don't need it. It's, yeah, yeah. It could just be a, a, a gaming um sort of operating system and it's just yeah. focused on on that so you can tweak your system and then to have that come out and be sort of portable uh run on the windows um sort of ecosystem so you can do game pass so you can do steam so you can do epic store um all, all these different I, I i think and that if that was sort of branded up as sort of an xbox you know portable or whatever it wants to be called that'd be brilliant yeah, yeah, no, I, 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 that's, I, I love that. If Sony did that as well, yeah. If we got another another handheld again, so it's PlayStation Steam Deck almost, and mm-hmm. Xbox Steam Deck, I'll definitely buy those uh, because I, I prefer handheld gaming. You know, whenever I can. I'm, I know the thing I'm most looking forward to over the next over the coming years is well, next year really will be the, the Switch Two. Um, it'll be very interesting to see what that end ends up looking like. I think it'll be very similar to what we've already got, but hopefully a lot more powerful. I would hope it's actually a leap above the Steam Deck in terms of processing power. I don't think it'll be a big leap. I think maybe it'll have a bit of an edge um, on, on, on the Steam Deck. But yeah, I think um, that'll open the Steam Deck, especially, has really opened the floodgates for this. We've seen all the other handbells come out. Yeah. But it seems now Microsoft and Sony have now got uh, are interested in, in this, which is really cool. Um, but yeah, we'll just uh, keep our eyes peeled and see how this affects the industry as a whole and the Xbox brand. And I'm sure we'll talk about it more when we know more. But in the meantime, yes, we wouldn't really like to talk about. Um, it's something yeah. we alluded to in our last show, wasn't it, Stu? Uh, exactly. So in, in our last uh, episode, we talked all about sort of uh, video formats and things like yeah. that. And, and the one thing... Actually, I was probably a little bit more interested in was, you know, the old video formats and how we used to watch, um, you know, films and TV shows at home and and just really sort of go through um, our our memories of those and, you know, a little bit about the sort of technical side, which I'm sure you'll have input on there, Trev, and, uh, and go back through our old sort of setups. Yeah, we were talking about physical, you know, media and how, Recently, I'd kind of gotten into collecting Blu-rays, even though obviously Blu-rays been around for a long while now. And um, mm. I dabbled a little bit in the past, like you know, when I got a PS3 for the first time and a HD TV for the first time. But I never really felt any desire to like collect films, and a lot of the time, I would just rely on the streaming or other ways of obtaining movie files and things like like that. Um, but we talked about how you know I bought a Blu-ray player, a dedicated one, and blu-rays are so cheap and you know even bought some ultra 4k ultra hd 4k blu-rays mm. you know and how much better the quality is and what you could get on streaming even a regular blu-ray is much better than what you could get on streaming quality wise um and yeah it kind of obviously we just couldn't help but hark back 
to when that was the norm, you know, when you couldn't really, well, obviously there was always, you know, even from the point when we were little kids, there was still, you know, box office channels and movie channels if you had satellite TV especially. So there were kind of ways outside of getting some kind of physical singular thing, MacGuffin, that you put into a player. Um, although, you know, in those days it was just linear TV, um, isn't it? Mm. Um you know, you couldn't book this stuff in or you couldn't like time shift it unless there was a time shift channel or even box office would be at a particular time. Sky box office, you'd pay for your film and then you'd have to sit down and watch it, you know, eight o'clock sort of thing on, on, on that night, which sounds kind of incredible now uh, when you think about it. But mm. the main way that kind of was above all of this stuff um, was basically VHS tapes. Um, so yeah. did you did you have a big collection of those? Is it something you, you collect well, now? Yeah. I, I didn't. I think um, I've, I actually I've never really had a big collection of VHS tapes. I did used to like renting them, but it was one of those in you know my household. This is you know telling t- the stories of my childhood here, but. Um, it was a bit of a oh no we can't we can't rent videos oh they'll 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 make they'll wear out the head of the the video player <laughs> oh you, you, you know they're not wrong right. <laughs> they, they, well yeah I know, I know but you, you know you can watch ten thousand videos before I'm sure you've <laughs> worn years. out the head of the <laughs> head head of the VHS so in reality I don't think I I you know I certainly did rent films and you know I remember using them and, and and i think i had my own sort of vhs player um at um at sort of some point sort of in in, in my childhood and it was a real sort of you know treat in, in my household to rent a film and you know, you'd come back and, and you'd watch it and and i remember i had um we had a betamax player at one point and i think i've got a hand-me-down betamax player which could yeah, it could play videos, um, but you couldn't record videos. So it had some sort of some sort of fault with it. Um, right. So it was a, it was a little bit sort of useless. But the main use of the video player in uh, my household growing up was to record episodes on the, of programs on the TV, and there was a system of finding you know what 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 video they're on and going back to them and then you you would watch them and that that, that was the main thing so there was lots of sort of films that were recorded off the tv and uh, but we did do a little bit of you know going to blockbuster or ritz video or you know whatever it was in dover i can't really remember the name yeah um it's probably a similar thing for me really i, I, I have a very vague memory of maybe i was about maybe four or five years old of my parents mm. buying a vhs player yeah and this would have been about 1986 or 87 mm. um because they were very they were, the vhs had been around for you know 10 odd years uh, before that point but it was very expensive like an individual a player might be like a 700 800 pounds and at the end of the 70s and um the tapes themselves no one really there wasn't really a big market for films in those days it wasn't until the 80s and even in the early part of the 80s you were looking at maybe like, um, you know, 70, 80 pounds to buy a cassette. Uh, but by the mid to late ages, they started to get way, way cheaper. And um, you could get a video player beyond the sort of 300, 400 pounds. Mm. And I remember we got one. And both of my parents are quite into films. They're sort of film buffs. And so am I, uh, really. I think I'll pick that up from them. Um, so over the years, yeah, we had like a huge VHS collection. Um, we had like... Um, well, the flat where we were living in at the time, um, there was like these big bookcases in, in other walls and they were mm. completely chock, chock full of uh, VHS tapes. Um, because also, yeah, like I said, there, were, there, there was a point when, you know, certainly when the early ni- 90s, very end of the 80s, early 90s, everywhere sold videotapes at that point. You know, mm. you could go into like, you know, Boots, you could go into, you know, Tesco, go into, a, yeah. you know, a petrol station and there'd be a little rack of 10 pound, you know, budget films uh, sort, sort of thing um we didn't really rent until um yeah we didn't really rent a lot well and the problem with renting you, you you wear out the head <laughs> it, it'll well, yeah. be, there'll, there'll be like jam on 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 the on the 
on, on, on the tape. Fingerprints all over And there'd be yeah. fingerprints and grease. And the grease would get on the head, you see. So you shouldn't really rent films. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You shouldn't watch them. You should rent normal ones, you know. I, I'm, I'm, I'm having, normal uh, ones. Just I'm having flashbacks to my childhood now. <laughs> <laughs> you you know, buy a please can we rent something no it's um don't buy a blu-ray you'll you'll rent you'll you'll wear out the, the gears you run out the yeah, gears and spin the disc you I know. know but yeah it, I'm, <laughs> I'm sure that video player point. we had all those years ago probably still works but it, it probably does um yeah 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 but um yeah there wasn't um i don't remember initially renting stuff but then there was a point i feel like it's sort of 91 92 when um we started to regularly go to the to the video rental shop that was in the town where i grew up um mm. it was like just a, there wasn't a blockbuster it was just an independent you know as an american to say a mom and pop shop yeah um and um they had video games eventually when the playstation dropped um because they, they heavily pushed video game uh rentals mm. which weren't a big thing where i grew up um i see you know i always see like retro gaming like youtube especially americans who say you know, we played these all these games because we used to rent them and stuff. I don't remember ever yeah. renting a game until the PlayStation, really. Um, yeah, the same, so, here, same here for me, yeah. Yeah, I used to do well, it all the time with the PlayStation, but yeah, the 8 and 16-bit eras, it wasn't a thing for me. Trev, I was going to ask you, yeah. that must have been amazing sort of growing up and having like all, all those films at your sort of fingertips. Did did, you, yeah. did your sort of friends come round and go, oh, let's go to Trev's house. We can watch, uh, you know, his, his, his parents are out. We can watch Aliens or, so, or, or something. Yeah. Is, is that the is that the situation that happened? Or To be honest, it was more when I got, um, when, they, when my parents replaced the main TV, mm. I got that TV as a hand-me-down. And then eventually we got a, a better video recorder. So I got the old video recorder. And that's when I started to like, I remember I used to spend like most most of my evenings. I wasn't at a mate's house or out out playing football. Although when you're young, you're going to be at home, you know, late mm-hmm. late in the evening, um, you know, regardless because you're a kid. Um, and um, I used to, there was a point when um, I would uh, pick out a film from the big huge collection. I remember, yeah, films like you know, um, a big one that you mentioned it already, but Aliens. Yeah, I remember just sort of looking at it and thinking, looking at the box art. And um, obviously, I think I think my dad would have bought that film because he, you know, again, he would have um, been a fan of, the, of that franchise as I am now. But there's only two films then, though. It would have been only just been Alien and Aliens at that point. But I didn't watch this. So, no, actually, no. There would have been there would have been probably um, three had been out by this point. Um, but I was a teenager before I actually picked that video out. We'd had it on the shelf for years. Mm. Um, I hadn't seen that film on TV or anything. It just somehow passed me by. But I remember putting it, uh, watching it, and it blew me away. You know, now it's my favourite film of all time. I've I mean, watched it a billion I, times. I, but I remember yeah. going to a friend's house, and um, I, th- I think I must have been, I don't know, 11 or, t- or 12 or something. And he was like, he always had, you, you know, films that you shouldn't really be watching. I think one of those was Alien, Alien 3, Aliens 3, Alien 3. And um, and I remember being absolutely like, whoa, this is, oh, this is you know a proper scary film. Oh, totally I rad, dude. <laughs> yeah, and and actually, sort of thinking back, I think, oh god, you know, if if I had a a, a child who was eleven, would I want him to be watching Alien Three? Oh, my, you know, probably be okay, but you know, would he have nightmares for weeks? Not sure. Um, or he would never yeah, go into I've, a spaceship. <laughs> I'd, I'd like a similar thing. Um, when I used to go over to Ireland, because I'm, I'm half Irish, my mum's from Ireland, um, to mm. visit, you know, my Irish family, I've, I'd like a billion. I'm sure a lot of people that have a similar background, you know, I've lo- a ton of Irish cousins. I've got hardly anything on my English side, mm. and a, ton, a ton of Irish c- cousins, and we go over there, and um, I would just hang out with my cousins all, um, all day because most of them are about my age or slightly older or slightly younger. Mm. Um, and, um, in the evening, uh, and my aunt friggin' like, like loved me. She'd give me like money and like buy me things and everything. Um, and, um, we would hang out and my, my, my old, my oldest cousin had a Commodore 64 and that was my mm. first experience of any kind of video games ever. And that was where it all started for me was that Commodore 64. So we're looking at sort of 1990, mm. um, well, way very late in the life of that particular system, but it was cheap and tons of people had them and everything. So that's probably how I managed to come across one by and by my my cousins. But another thing we did was, and it was a sort of a classic sort of dodgy thing. 
Uh, there, I think there was a chap that used to drive around the local sort of villages because well, my 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 mum's family were it's like a small village out on in, in, around Cork, and um, he'd come around and he'd have like a ton of dodgy like VHS tapes. I didn't really know understand the nature of this whole thing. Now I do, looking back on it. Yeah. I think he probably copied them from from like from, from rentals, and you'd, you'd rent them from him, and he'd go off in his van to the next village, and you'd have a bunch of tapes. He'd obviously come come back for them, um, you know, the next day or something. And God, I saw a ton of, at the age of six and seven, I saw like Total Recall, um, oh, wow. Terminator 1. I, yeah. I, I, I thought they were great. I loved them. Um, I remember Terminator kind of scared me. Even like WWF stuff. I remember watching like, like the Royal Rumble and all, and all that, mm. like 91 or 92, and thinking, oh, this is cool. That's how I got into wrestling as well through, through that. Um, but yeah, um, I remember that. and um, A lot of those films I was introduced to from a dodgy in Ireland bloke you know having been that, that, that was of it. the latest films I, yeah. I think, I think what, what, what's interesting is when you know before VHS you know there was a certain type of film that came out it went to the cinema and then you know years later it, it came out on TV potentially and and things like that but then actually VHS generated a whole new you know genre of, of films and everyone can you probably got a few examples of this the films that came out absolutely bombed in the cinema but then through word of mouth and the actually oh yeah this is and this did amazingly well in the, in the rental stores and people would buy uh buy the videos rent the videos and oh, i'm trying to think of a film that it actually sort of generated a whole new sort of oh yeah you're of, probably t- type to, of you Probably yeah, go ahead. Yeah, films like um, you could point to something like the Terminator. Really, it wasn't yeah. a huge box office success. The first film, mm. and um, obviously years of years upon years of people seeing it on VHS meant that you know a big, huge fan base built up to the point where everybody was screaming for a, for a sequel. And then obviously mm. the sequel came out, and that was a huge like box office hit by yeah. many orders of magnitude over the over the original things like like RoboCop and those sort of they're not really B yeah. movies because they're they're Hollywood sort of you know, mm. full blown productions, but they're not these giant Star Warsy type level things. They were kind of they're you know, a bit more um, gritty, aren't they? Yes, yes, they're gritty, and, yeah. and 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 they're sort of part of them. I, th- I think they were actually. I think before, um, you know, I might be wrong here, but films were made for you know the big screen, and then films were made to be shown on on a you know on a rental that was there okay it must look good in the cinema it must you know blow you out your seats but then actually it's got to look good on someone's 24 inch you know four by three tv at home so let's focus on that as well and yeah no it's it's, it's interesting and and i you know I, I love a good sort of made made for rental you know action film that you know now we all sort of you know things like you know Steven Seagal films you know what's it Siege or uh, yeah, yeah. You know, things like Die Hard and you, you know it, it just feels like that's something that should be watched on VHS and, and yeah, watching yeah. a four K version of that oh yeah you know it's good of course it is but you know watching it on on how it's you know designed to be sort of you know portrayed is yeah, so, something about it, something a bit of excitement about it. It's, it's interesting as well that you mentioned about cinema and the, the transition of films from that to a home format. I mean, it was a different world then as well because a film would come out in the cinema and really you'd be looking at, after it had kind of dropped off from the cinema, you'd be looking at another kind of maybe like a year before it would come out to rent. Um, oh yeah, and, um, yeah. So you couldn't like you 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 would have forgotten the, the plot of the film. <laughs> In that well, amount that, of time, that, that, yeah. that, that's it. Because if I remember in the UK, this, it might be different in uh, America or, or other places. But let, let's say it was a five year cycle between the film coming out in the cinema, then it would come out for rental for six months or a year, then yeah. you could purchase the film as a VHS, yeah. and then five years later. It would, you know, it would be such a big deal. Oh, you can now watch the latest um, Indiana Jones film. It's now on, you know, Christmas Day special on, on, you know, BBC One. Watch, you know, 
Yeah, I was going to say Empire Strikes Back. That was yeah. a Raise of the Lost Ark or Watch, something. Gone, gone with the wind. <laughs> yeah, Indiana Jones, Jolly Gone with Chaplin. the wind. <laughs> so Laurel and Hardy. Yeah, yeah, it was it was a big deal, and and you couldn't. And now I I, I sort of feel that. Oh well, I didn't watch that thing film in this in the cinema. Oh well, it'd be on streaming. I can pay four ninety nine and watch it in a couple of months. Oh, I missed it on that. Don't worry, it will be free on Amazon Prime or Netflix in another few months. And it, it doesn't quite feel. As, yeah, you'd as feel it, like the, the marketing machine around a film would go on for years um, mm. as well. Whereas now, like, you know, the latest Marvel films come out a month later. That's done. The next one's coming out now. Here's the posters and yeah. trailers. In those days, there'd be the big build up to the film come out in the cinema. You know, the posters, the magazines, and some, or maybe the, the internet, if we're going a bit later on in, in, mm. in the 90s. And then it, it would come, maybe there'd be toys as well if it was Batman or something, you know, sticker yeah. albums and all of that. So you'd be surrounded by the marketing for a year of just the cinema release. And then, um, the, then there'd be the rental. So again, there'd be a big push then for like, you know, the posters to be back out, the, the toys are still being sold, or then maybe they've expanded into new niche, you know, sub, sub ranges of toys and, but still mm. around this, this, this video rental version. And then that'd be, that'd be three months, four months, five months of that being available to rent. And then there'd be the buying the VHS tape. Yeah. Um, of that. And that'd be another six months, you know, my, maybe the Christmas is coming up at that point and, so be, you'd be bombarded with marketing for this film. So a film yeah. would last in terms of it being in like the, the current thing. It'd be like, you know, two or three years, perhaps. Certainly with like things that were kind of family orientated or things that yeah. had a, a franchise around them, you know, which seems like every film now is a franchise. But the kind of the franchises grew out of the people buying the VHS tapes of some of them, like Terminator, like we just said, it was a smaller film. Um, it got big on VHS, and then Terminator Two came out, and there was video games, books, comics, action figures, and and so it would never really die out for like you mm. know for years, um, unless there was another sequel but, came came out, and sequels weren't common, you know, in, in certain like in the, it was really the eighties that kind of made sequels successful when you had things like Aliens and Star Trek Two and Empire Strikes Back, and yeah. It's, it's interesting how, well, that, how that's it. And, and I'm not saying I I, th- I think potentially it's, it's a better system now because you know you can watch a film quicker. You can watch it at home. It's on a bigger yeah. screen. So that's you know that's all positive. I don't want to you know a film comes out in the cinema and I, and I can't watch it for five years because I, I don't want to pay three pound fifty to you know to watch it at the, the rental store. But actually another thing I remember about the rental store was sort of think about it, you know, the new releases, they were three pound 50. You got them for one night. Yeah. yeah you, exactly, wanted, yeah. you wanted, you know, they'd last... be in those bigger, though, those larger boxes as well, weren't they? The clamshell, that were slightly yeah. larger, the regular ones you could buy. Yeah. But yeah. then, but then you could let, let's say a film was, you know, six months old, a year old, then that would be, you know, uh 199 and you can have it for three nights so you yeah. can watch it twice and 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 then there are some even have some that keep them for seven days well. for a pound and they'd often yeah. have a big like a bargain bin of ones they're actually selling that are ex-rentals mm, and they'd be like yeah. literally like fiver or a tenner you know um and you could get like an x rails you'd be worn out to hell but it's still still perfectly watchable yeah, uh, but yeah, I used to love it when they'd put a big set like once every three months to be a big clear out of some of their older stuff, and I'd be like, mm-hmm. oh, "Wicked, we can get." And that's like the excitement of films was so so strong as uh, you know when you were a kid in that era because we talked about the big gaps between you know cinema release, rental release. I remember when I went to see um, Star Trek: First Contact with my dad in the cinema, and that had been I was like crapping my pants myself, like, crapping my pants because I was so excited <laughs> because. <laughs> I used to buy the Star Trek monthly magazine, so I was getting hyped up from that for a solid mm. like year. Like, oh, here's the next Star Trek film. It's going to be called this. Here's pictures from the set each month. And then they'd be like, it's coming out in December in the UK. And I'd be like, oh, my God. And then I went to see it with a bunch of people from school. And then I went to see it with my dad a few mm. weeks, uh, a couple of weeks later. And that was really exciting, even though, you know, it was, I'd already seen it, but it was still exciting. And then there was nothing um and you know also you'd still be hyping it in like the magazine saying you know um it's doing great here's all the action figures and books mm. and everything and i'll be surrounded by all of that and then i'll and then they'll tell you when the, it's coming out to rent i remember pre-ordering it 
like you could pre-order at the rental shop to get to get a, you know a, to get to rent it which sounds funny you're pre-ordering something that you'll have for a few hours you know mm. in, in reality but i remember doing that it'd been so long since i'd seen the film that it hadn't really diminished in terms of the excitement of seeing it because the the plot you know it was kind of not fresh in my mind so i remember you remember the big scenes but you don't remember the, the bits in between so i was excited mm. to see it again just to bring back all of that cool action stuff that i loved when i saw it in the cinema and then buying it you know the following year after that thinking great i can buy it and own it and watch it all the all the time you know because yeah. I, I was like that with films and i'd buy a film and i'd, I'd watch it Jeff, over and over now, again now, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna ask a personal question now on that first time you went to rent that star star trek i was gonna say star wars film there star trek film and and it wasn't you got there and and in the the small town that you lived in, there were three other Star Trek fans, and they got there before you, and they rented the <laughs> film. They 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 didn't have to wait for their dad to get home from work. They had they could go there before you did. Yeah, and and they yeah. got there before you, and they rented the three copies that the video store got. How 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 did you feel? Um. I'll just get my mum to go and get it before then. No, it wasn't there. It wasn't there. Your mum <laughs> couldn't go. She had to go. She was working late. It's a really good point because you know what? If those copies were gone, yeah. You, you couldn't watch infinite, it. You, you yeah, couldn't watch it. Yeah. You so don't need you, to pre order a stream, do you now? There's like, you just press the button, it's there. You, you can watch it. There's no. Exactly. There's no scarcity, is basically what we're saying. Yeah. You, if you didn't have yeah. that film or you were like, it didn't necessarily have to be the latest film, did it? You could be like, oh, that film that came out a year ago. I think I'll go and get it now. I've got a big plan over the weekend to hang out with my mates. We're going to watch this film. Yeah, we're, we're, Turn up we're, to the video shop. It's gone. You know, oh, someone took it an hour ago. Sorry, we only had one. You know, that's yeah. it. <laughs> You're completely you, screwed. So, yeah. Do you think um, also there's, this might be a big thing sort of in American culture as well, but I, I do like a good sort of independent sort of – video rental store and of course you don't get those anymore there might be sort of one or two um you yeah, know not really, in, in yeah. london somewhere i really get but, chains don't get big chains there's no blockbuster no yeah. still hmv still hmv but they're obviously still HMV, yeah yeah um but i always thought it was interesting you go in there and you talk to the guy behind the counter and then you know you might look in the, on the you know the foreign film section or you, you know, you'll be like 13 or you look, you look at the 18 year old, you know, films and they all look, you know, like things like, you know, Chucky or, 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 or something like that. And you'll be like, oh, yeah, yeah. I really love to watch that film. Or yeah. you might just pick up something that goes, oh, actually, I like that actor from, um, you know, he, he was in, you know, Star Trek 2 or, or whatever. So yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll watch him in, in this. And you could, you know, find some real gems just by, you know, spending a good bit of time looking in the video store for... Uh, you, You'd be looking you know. at the cover as well. You wouldn't have a review that you could quickly look oh, up you, on YouTube. You, you wouldn't have a clue. You'd be looking you, at the cover and the, yeah. You could go home with the biggest pile of rubbish. And, and like the reviews are always... Them. It might have a review on the cover of, of like, you know, to try and get it to, to rent it. Like, but it'll be something ridiculous, like, this film's good, four stars. And it's like Daily yeah. Star. And it's like, yeah, they're an, they're an authority on, on, on film. Yeah. So I'll, I'll definitely get that. Um, yeah, I mean, like, God, now there's like, I don't think, well, you could still, obviously, with, you just said HMV, you can, you can buy films, physical copies of films. We talked about that in the last episode, but. I don't think there is a such thing as a rental shop at all. I, I, I think there might be one or two, like you know, like cool little places where you can go and do that. I don't think there is any more. But one thing I, I, put, I just popped in. Is Love Film even still ago. going? Is, is, huh? love, is, is love is Love Film still going? I, I didn't. Netflix no idea. bought it, didn't they? Where you got mailed a DVD and you rented a DVD, didn't you? I think and Netflix did and, that for a while. I know it was Love Film, and then Netflix bought them. I think, but then I don't think I'm not sure that's a thing. If you can be mailed DVDs I to rent them, so, yeah. Um, Love Film is part of the Amazon Prime world. I, I think. You know what? I'm going to look it up. Look it up. I am going anyway, to look it up. I wanted to mention. Yeah. Um, obviously, I talked about it earlier, but H. Bomakai, he did a, a video about um, sort of VHSs and old films. And then one thing I really didn't realise is, obviously, when films were designed to be in the cinema, 
They were on a great yeah. big uh, widescreen, whatever resolution, whatever, 16 by 9, maybe wider than that. I'm not sure. Wider vision was that a thing. Um, so then, actually, when they made the videos for, um, you know, to go on to VHS, of course, everyone had a 4 by 3 TV at home. So Indeed. they would actually cut off the sides of the video. So you Pan would be scan. watching... Um, basically, um, eighty percent of the, of of the actual screen. So, yeah, I mean, do you remember? Obviously, you talked about sort of uh, Star Trek. I want to say Star Wars, Star Trek, <laughs> and and did you go? Hold on, this is. Uh, I remember this scene that 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 ship would come in across the horizon. You, you know, a lot earlier when I was watching it yeah. in the cinema, but actually when I'm watching it. On, on on the video it sort of just appears and you know what's your thoughts on that yeah there wasn't yeah obviously you're talking about pan and scan i mean that you you couldn't really get um you know films in in, in widescreen where they'd stick a couple yeah. of black bars on the top and bottom to get the full view that you would get in the cinema that i don't feel that really became a common thing until the 90s where they would make kind of two versions wouldn't they you'd be able to get yeah. a special widescreen version you'd have to often pay a couple of quid more wouldn't you on top of um the regular and some people didn't didn't like that yeah some people didn't like that like oh no i want it to fill the screen it's annoying looks like you're looking through a letterbox you know yeah Um, but i remember um the first time i was really like sold on this is the version that i always want to get if i can um i remember picking up like um the widescreen vhs of blade runner I saw it in like, you know, I might have been in Ireland and it was in like a secondhand v- the shop and it had a bunch of VHS tapes. And I already liked Blade Runner at that point. Yeah, I must have been about 14 or, or 15. We had the pan and scan version in our big video collection that we've talked about. Mm. Remember, I watched that loads and I happened to see, and I think I was reading like Empire magazine and things by that point already. So I knew that, you know, and you just know, so you know anyway, when you go to the cinema, that this is clearly wider than what I'm used to on my TV. Mm. Um, so you're aware that that's the optimal way to watch a, a film. Um, but I remember picking up that VHS cause it was really cheap second hand, like for like a tenner or something mm. and watching it at home, even on my piddly little 14 inch CRT. You know, I was like, wow, I can see it's like, it's like I've watched the film for the first time again. Really? Know? And, um, it's really hard to go back. It was really hard for me to go back. And but at that point I knew that I was watching the jankier version of whatever film that I was watching at that time. But, you know, um, the widescreen versions were niche versions of films. You know, you so I don't, maybe a lot of the time you actually they didn't actually release a widescreen. Um, mm-hmm. But to be honest, um, despite that, I, I would still often go for the cheaper option. I remember buying like, you know, the Indiana Jones trilogy and the Alien box set and like um, Star Wars box set on VHS. I remember, I think you, you know, most of the time I would just get the regular ver- version. I think a lot of places wouldn't stock the widescreen editions, like probably like Woolworths, and you know yeah. would be would be your best best would be the, where I'd get my VHS to, new ones, where I get my new VHS. I, I bet they had, days, um, but yeah, what was it? Specialist shops or something for video files, things like. I think you know, HMV. H- you probably HMV. Could. Yeah. I would say that, yeah. or what was it? Virgin Mega Store. They would have a section, um, yeah. for that. But I want to ask you another uh, little, question. Like, Trev. Like the, did you have any nearly on... sorry, sorry, go on. <laughs> yeah sorry um did you have any rich friends who had a laser disc did you ever watch have you well have you ever watched a laser disc i'm sure the answer is yes but did you ever watch one back in the day well yeah i've got a laser disc player i've had one for quite a while actually i've been collecting mm-hmm. them uh, on and off i'm not like a constant collector on and off since about 2007 Oh really? When I got a, when I got a second hand laser display, and I've got um, not a big collection, but it fills a little part of my of one of one of my book bookshelves. Um, so yeah, I've watched lots of laser discs. But back in the day, um, the only person I knew that had one, I had a mate uh, a mate of mine, Mark, um, and um, um, I remember I went over his house once. It was the first time I went over his house. He had a very big house. I think his dad was quite was quite well off, um, and. Um, he had. Um, you remember? He said, "Oh, Trev, you should, you should check, check, check this out." And and he, was, he took me into his living room, and and he showed me like um, the player. And then so this is like a, you know, like this is what we watch films on. It's really cool. You should check this out. And he got a disc out, 
and it was a giant to me i was like what, what the hell is that it's a giant cd and he's like yeah it's a big cd that plays films I was like, oh my god um and it was apocalypse now i, I really oh, remember wow. specifically remember it was apocalypse now i'd never seen that film then i was like you know 10 10 11 year old kid um and um he put it on and he had quite a big tv it was i don't know, I can't remember if it was widescreen we're, we're talking about this is about 94 95 um so laser disc actually probably was starting to go on on its way down at that point because dvd was only a couple of years away um and yeah i thought wow this looks it was so like kind of crisp and clean the the image mm, yeah you didn't get um, all that like, interference wow. exactly or tracking like issues or anything and it looked amazing and um that was when i first became aware and after that i remember um um, in the big town near where I grew up, Colchester, there was a, a big video shop called MBC. It was like oh, music video, that, yeah. uh, video, and whatever the C stand for. And they did, yeah, uh, video games, music, and it's a lot basically HMV, but a bit more specialised. It was literally just music, videos, and um, and games. Um, and actually, no, I don't think it was games. I think it was just music and video. Mm. Um, and um, they had a laser disc section. Um, it was like one little little unit of the big walls of like VHSs. And there was there was like one 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 unit of laser discs, and obviously they looked amazing. To, I knew what they were at this point in time, mm. but yeah, they were about forty pounds for for one film. And there was, I remember I saw the Star Wars box set, and that was about yeah. two hundred quid um, or something. Um, yeah. So yeah, there was never any. Ch- I mean, my dad wasn't a big technical; he wasn't in, in, into tech really. So um, I had oh, mates that had dads that were into that. So they had this stuff and they had computers and all that. My dad wasn't really into any of that. So he was never interested in getting a laser disc player. But they fascinated me from that point on. And when they became very cheap, I was like, God, I'd love to grab one. And I did. Um, but yeah, what about you? Well, I mean, back in the day, I, I mean, I, I I don't have any memories of seeing laser discs in, in, in shops or, or seeing anyone with a laser disc player. I don't remember. Um, I, I think maybe um, I've got sort of memories of seeing them on, on TV or people talking about them, but yeah. it was more, you know, I, I was, I was going to sort of interrupt you earlier. And the fact that, you, you know, films were 40 pound, I can imagine your dad going, right, hold on. I could buy one film for 40 pounds or I could rent 10 films, you know, or buy, you know, five or six films. It, it, it wouldn't be, I'll go, well, I know it might look better, but I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not paying that money. And and I think I would, that would be sort of my rationale because people don't realize 40 pounds for a, or however much it was back in the day, well, you could double that in today's my money. I would yeah, say, exactly, you could double that. And imagine really. paying seventy or eighty pound to watch, you know, a, re- a really Jingle good version of Terminator Two, and yeah, you, you, you know, and yeah, the and players, the players were of Christ, five hundred, six hundred pounds oh, versus easily. a fifty quid, fifty quid VHS player. But I, I, th- yeah. I think they went down the right. Well, they went down the route of. Actually, if you're a special, a specialist, you know, audiophile and you want to have the best quality, then, you know, if you're a city banker or something, then get yourself yeah, a laser was... disc player. That, that's, yeah. you know, if you want to go to Seven Oaks and uh, go to a hi-fi store, that's where you buy your, your, your what's it, Pioneer. Um, richer Sounds. Yeah, Richer Sounds. Um, it's funny because i've just pulled out i'm um, in the room where my laser disc collection is i pulled out one that i know had a price still on it mm. um, i've pulled out jingle all the way the arnold schwarzenegger christmas film which is freaking awesome by the way so don't take the piss out of this film um it's shit the, the, the price the price yeah the price label is still on it from our price the, the, the shop our price which was kind of a hmv a rival to hmv wasn't it back in the yeah, day there's one, there's one in dover yeah, yeah, I think that was one in most most big towns and cities. Uh, thirty nine pounds ninety eight. Oh my! That's goodness. how much that was from what, our price. What year was that? Well, this film is from not well, the film came out in nineteen ninety six, but I think this laser disc would have been maybe the year after that. Yeah, night the copyright is nineteen ninety seven. So yeah, I'm just going to go ninety seven. Right, hold on. Oh, I paid about for this late. I mean, they've gone up a bit in price in recent years when more people have discovered them. Uh, but I must only paid for this on eBay about five quid. 
So what 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 year was that? Ninety seven. Ninety seven. Yeah. Okay, and thirty nine. Thirty nine. Ninety nine. Thirty nine ninety eight, but yeah, ninety nine, whatever. 90, oh, 39. <laughs> let, let let's say forty. Yeah. Um, in cost in. Oh, I'll put this around the wrong way. Right, ninety uh, ninety. So I'm doing an inflation calculator. I want to know. I found in um, yeah. June twenty four. Seventy five pounds. Someone oh, paid yeah. seventy five pounds five pence to watch Jingle All the Way. So you could imagine, you know, that's for one film, one two hour film for like yeah. a big, huge, Honestly, mega that, that's... Star Wars trilogy. That'd be like two hundred quid easy, which is what three hundred, four hundred now for a box set. Oh man, yeah. yeah. I, I, yeah. I mean that that's seventy five pound now to to watch a a, a, a film. You, you I mean, know, really, yeah, film, films are way cheaper now when you think about them. I mean, a VHS tape, let's say, in the middle of the night, the early 90s at its height, I would say, mm. uh, a, a brand new film would be, what, 15 quid, I would say, in Woolworths yeah, 12, or HMV? 15. Yeah, yeah. which isn't bad. And it's about what they are. A Blu-ray is about that, isn't it, now, for a brand yeah. new film? Yeah, mm. yeah. So they're not too out of whack of what we would be expanding. Uh, and actually, £15 now is less than £15 then. So they've gotten cheaper. But so yeah, it actually, really emphasizes yeah, and, that. And, and how much is it to stream a new film? Not like a brand, brand new, you like know, tenor? Film, not, a tenor, yeah, Maybe? yeah, 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 yeah. And you so, can rent them, can't you, on Amazon for like three quid or something? So that's probably yeah, cheaper three, than three pound fifty for a night, or, you know, back in the day, yeah, exactly. Yeah, but they were, amount. they were amazing. I mean, if you were used to VHS tapes back then and someone showed you a laser disc, I mean, there's no rewinding. You've got what, what would look amazing on a CRT, uh, uh, the video quality, really clean, crisp, still analog. It wasn't uh, uh, digital, but look, uh, way better resolution than a VHS tape. Um, but, you know, obviously the audio quality, you can get digital or audio on these, like you could on DVDs later on. Mm. Um, it would sound amazing. Some of them even had 5.1 um, audio. Some of the very later laser discs would be six channel sound which you can mm. never do on a VHS tape. So yeah, they were they were like light years ahead um of, of a VHS but they were just they were never really going to be mainstream because they were so expensive. I think they were um, they're expensive and they're really quite impractical. It was yeah, like a, yeah. it's like a, obviously it was size size for a record and people had records before but you know you couldn't you know and and they could only play I think an hour of a video and if you had an earlier uh, side was an hour, yeah. So you had to flip, you had, you had to, you had to flip it over, over yeah. didn't you? You had to stop the film, yeah. you yeah. know, flip it over, put it back in, and or get got a later a one. Can, yeah, mine, mine could uh, rotate the laser, so you didn't have to do that. But yeah, yeah. still kind of funny. <laughs> you know, yeah, exactly. You sort of think about it, and then some films, you know, big epics, you know, they would come on two two laser discs. So you would have oh, yeah, to put yeah. in, yeah, you know, one laser disc, flip it over, and then towards the end of the film, put in the second laser disc. Yeah, exactly. I, and um, Titanic, which I've got on laser disc, is on. Um, in fact, I don't know exactly how many sides it's on, but I can tell you, mm. it is on. It comes in beautiful, beautiful, um, like like sleeve, like a, almost like a like a huge, like massive mm. epic album or audio album. It is on. Um, I think it's on four sides. Yeah, four sides. So two separate discs. So even if you had a player like I do, where where it would flip the the, the laser over, you still have to get up and um, put in a different a second disc um, halfway through the film. So yeah. yeah, incredible. But that was uh, the extreme. I mean, there I mean, there isn't really a high. I guess ultra ultra HD four K movies are the high end video movie buff video file sort of mm. thing but the, the, but the price of entry is nothing like what a laser disc would be i mean you can no. well you just get get an xbox one s for you know 80 quid down cex i can play ultra hd blu-rays and they're only like you know you can pick them up for a tenner so it's not like it's the the barrier yeah. of entry is not not in the same league as um it, it would have been uh before but yeah, that was that was the way. If you wanted the ultimate way outside of going to the cinema, it was Laserdisc was where you wanted to go if you had the money. Unfortunately, we were little kids then, and 
who uh, couldn't afford to any of that stuff. No, um, it, was, it was Dream yeah. World, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh, 100%. You have to have had a very rich parent or a parent who was a big film buff. And even then, to be honest, most people would be happy with a VHS. You know, exactly. So, yeah, much like, you know, these days you could say, well, you can get, it's way better quality than streaming. You know, if you buy a 4K Ultra HD, most people are like, nah, I don't want to pay £10 a pop for one film when I could just pay 10 to Netflix and have anything uh, and, and have everything. And to be honest, the, the difference in quality probably isn't the leap that a laser disc would have been over a VHS tape, you know, uh, streaming versus a 4K disc, really, um, would it? Unless you have to be like John Linneman, really, with your face right <laughs> up to the screen. To, yeah, to be really the pixels. Fun. Yeah, exactly. To be really fussy. You know, my dad wouldn't have a clue. what He wouldn't be able to, he probably wouldn't tell that much if it was in a DVD and a Blu-ray, to be honest. You know, which 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 is a much better, easier thing to tell. You know the the difference, but um, wow, yeah, there we go. Oh, that was a uh, old video VHSs. There was those are the days, eh? Yeah, the good old days. Don't get that excitement anymore when you're just flicking through tiles on the Netflix no. latest film screen, do you? As you do hunting through something in a blockbuster or your local video yeah. shop or whatever. Yeah, really smelly yeah. one. Really smelly video shop. Sweaty vinegar. Sweaty what vinegar. You know, Bag the guy's behind the counter, like, he's a bit overweight and... Tattoos you know, all over his arms. Tattoos all over his arm. Got yeah. a fag hanging out of his mouth. Yeah, you know, yeah. They're the good old days. That's it, that's yeah. it. Yeah, and you're you scared to, you know, take your video up to him in case he makes fun of you. Yeah. Very, the, whole, the whole, like, there's a whole thing. It, it really <laughs> was a whole thing. From the actual video to the shop itself to the person you're buying it off or renting it off. Yeah. It really was a whole experience. Uh, yeah. But anyway, you can find us on the internet, Stu. Well, we're everywhere. We're on Twitter. You can find us on Console Shock. You can find us on Facebook, Console Shock. You can find us on YouTube, search Console Shock. And finally, um, any sort of podcast client you can possibly name, we are on all of them. Again, search Console Shock or cool. Review Tech UK reviewing tech in the uk if we don't sack our editor of course which is a thing yeah, now know, who's going to edit now? these videos i need to go off and work this and see what happened there it's very interesting yeah. well thank you everybody for listening again to us ramble on about old stuff take care and we hopefully will hear you or see you in the next one cheers take it easy guys bye bye <laughs>